Hey everyone, I hope y'all are having a great day. Today I'm going to be talking about... So, it turns out, I do not know the name of the series. That's my B. The Folk of the Air. That's what the series is called. So, The Folk of the Air Trilogy by Holly Black. The first book is The Cruel Prince, the second book is The Wicked King, and the third book is The Queen of Nothing. They all have really similar names, so I get them mixed up a lot. But yeah, I have seen this trilogy all over booktube, all over book Twitter especially, and so I finally decided to pick it up, and I read all three of these books in this month, in January, which is really impressive for me. Three books in one month? Whew, I was speeding through them. So yes, if you don't know, the series is about a fairy world that kind of borders the human world, like you can travel in between them. And our main character is named Jude. She's a human girl, but her foster dad, adoptive dad, is a high general in this main court of the fairy world, and so she lives there. There's a lot of court politics, a lot of political intrigue, a lot of fighting and violence. When I read the first book, The Cruel Prince, I really thought that this was like the fairy fantasy that we could have had if Akatar was written by someone a little more talented than Sarah J. Maas. So, any, any writer at all, really. Sorry. I'll be honest, this series, the Folk of the Air series, is not excellent. It's not amazing. I think there's so many ways in which this could have been improved. But what we do have is a really addictive series. I have not encountered something so addicting since TikTok. By the way, I'm addicted to TikTok. Please send me help. Also follow me at Bookish Sophia. But yeah, it's a really addictive series. After I finished the first one, I immediately read the second one. After I finished the second one, I immediately read the third one. And I finished the trilogy so fast. They're also pretty short, so it doesn't take that long to get through them. Something I really enjoy about the series is these characters. None of them are fully good or fully bad. They're all somewhere in the middle and it's so interesting because during one book you might hate a character and then in the next you suddenly love them. So they always have these complexities and these layers that are slowly revealed and sometimes they shift back and forth but that's what makes it so interesting is that they're so complicated. These characters are not one thing or the other. They're allowed to shift and move and grow and I think that's really exciting. There's so many fun character dynamics that flow throughout the books. This entire fantasy like overarching plot of competing for the throne, competing for the crown, I think it's so much fun. I never tire of it. Also, after seeing so many tweets on Twitter about Jude and Cardin, I really thought that romantic plotline would have been a bigger thing than it was. It was not that big of a part of, a, of the series. Like, I was prematurely so invested in this relationship just because of what I've seen about it on Twitter. And then in the first book, I was like, where, where is it? So you have to wait to see what people are talking about. And even then, I didn't think it was like that big of a part of the book. I wish more things happened in each book. Like I said, the books are kind of short, so not a lot of stuff goes down. And there's a lot of like waiting and planning and waiting and planning. And I would like flip through the pages so fast just because I wanted to get to the next like actual plot point. The series is just so much fun. It's imperfect, but it's so addicting. And so you can breeze through them so fast. It's like the definition of, oh, I couldn't put the book down in comparison. I recently read All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr, which is the winner of the Pulitzer Prize, and it's a nice, good, very enjoyable book, but it's definitely not a page turner, you know? It's not like I ever put down the book and was dying to pick it up the for the next time. This book was really like that and I've said in a previous video that I rarely choose to read over just going to bed. <laughs> but yeah, I would stay up to read these books because they were so, so fun. So that's the end of the non-spoiler section. Do I think the series is flawless or even really good? Probably not, but I think it's so much fun and I think that's a lot of value in reading for leisure is just how much fun you're having. And I will say Holly Black writes some very interesting characters. She definitely does not keep anybody flat. Everyone has so much dimension to them. The characters are always surprising you. It's really nice. So if you haven't read the series, I'm going to ask you to leave now because I don't want you to spoil yourself. Um, but honestly, you're not missing out on that much because I don't have that much to say about spoilers. <laughs> so I want you to leave in three, two, one. Bye! Okay, let's see. I just really, really want to bitch about this one thing. This one thing about when Jude and Cardin get married and Cardin exiles Jude into the mortal world until excused by the crown or whatever. And the second Cardin said that, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. She is the crown now. Like, what do you mean? She's your queen. So she could just excuse herself. Like, this doesn't make any sense. And then she spends all those months in the mortal world. And when we open up with the queen of nothing, she's been living in the wor mortal world because she believes she's been exiled. And then later it's like a reveal that 
that Cardin purposefully stated it like that so that she could always pardon herself. And it was like set up to be this huge revelation, but it absolutely did not work because it's so dumb. If you make somebody a queen and you say that they can be excused by the crown, she is the crown. How could you not put that together? That's like so obvious because it's blatant in the words. It's not even like a trick of meaning, you know? It's like literally she is the crown. She can excuse herself. Oh, I was so frustrated. She was so betrayed that she'd been exiled into the mortal world and I was like, dude, are you dumb? You are literally the queen of the court. You, oh, oh my, oh. What's really interesting to me though is that we left off the series as we did with Cardin and Jude being king and queen of the court because the entire story arc really is about trying to get Oak eventually on the throne, right? That was one twist that I didn't expect was that Oak was a natural heir to the throne. But anyway, like the overarching plotline of the series I would say is that we're trying to keep the throne safe until it's ready for Oak to be old enough to be able to be king. And like part of me wonders whether that's ever going to happen because I do think Jude especially is a very very power hungry person you know she's kind of Slytherin and I really don't reasonably see her abdicating her throne voluntarily unless she's been on it for years like hundreds and hundreds of years which I don't know if it's possible because she's immortal that's another thing that's not addressed is that like how is she married to this basically immortal being when she's still a human it's not like breaking dawn where she gets she changed into a vampire, she gets changed into a fairy. Like, I'm wondering if the earth is just gonna give her vivacity and life because you know how the crown is connected to the earth or the land. Is that what's gonna happen? Or is there like gonna be a spinoff series where we get to discuss this and find the answers? I'm not sure. But yeah, by the end of Queen of Nothing, I'm thinking that Jude and Cardin actually like being in that power. They like those positions that they're holding and they probably want to stay there. And so I don't know what's happening about Oak becoming king eventually. Not really sure what's happening there. It really kind of grossed me out honestly that Vivian glamoured Heather during that one scene and like yeah I know that eventually became into a big fight and was part of the reason that they broke up but that's definitely abuse in a relationship and it's so so nasty to see it written in young adult literature without it being fully addressed and labeled as what it is and I feel like this is one of the reasons I hated Akatar was that Resand or whatever his name is would like control or like drug the main character's name who's so forgettable I forgot it. That's emotional abuse. That's not protection. It's abuse. It's 2020. We should call it like it is. And I do understand that Holly Black made it so that the relationship definitely crumpled after that and that they have to rework to kind of work through the mistrust that that one event sowed in their relationship. But Yes, that is something that definitely bothered me while reading. Something that surprisingly did not bother me was how Cardin bullied Jude so much. Like, I know that in any other series, I would have been like, how is this the love interest? He sucks. He's like such a grade A prick. There's no other explanation as to how this could be excused. But I think what makes it okay in this instance is that Jude also sucks. So she's also like hella violent, is a murderer, literally swears Cardin into following her commands. For some reason that I cannot explain to myself, that works better somehow, is when they both suck and they both know that they suck. Is that a good foundation for a romantic relationship? Probably not, but at least it's super reciprocal, I guess. I have no clue how to explain my feelings about that, but for some reason Jude and Cardin do work. So yeah, I think that honestly sums up all of that I wanted to say about the series. It's really fun, really addicting, the characters, oh, they're so good, the complexity the richness, the depth. It's so fun when all the characters are morally gray, are morally ambiguous. Was the writing the most impressive? Not really, I do think sometimes it was pretty overwritten, but it's just so much fun. I could honestly really see myself rereading this series kind of soon actually just because it was really really fun and I do think that the first time I read through it all I was rushing just to know what happened that maybe I like skimmed stuff and didn't get the full appreciation of the story but yes those are my thoughts on the folk of the air trilogy by a holly black if you've read it which you probably have because you've made it to the end of the spoiler section I would love to hear your thoughts on it I'm really curious as to what you thought of the ending and how you would rank the three books which one was your favorite I think honestly my favorite it might have been the first one, The Cruel Prince, just because it really, really sucked me in. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic day and happy reading. Bye! Follow me on TikTok.